Hi guys, today's video is on electronic configurations and it is suitable for people studying standard level IB and A level chemistry. So last video I discussed line emission spectra and we talked a little bit about Bohr's theory on the structure of the atom and that's where we're going to begin this video because we know that he suggested or he came up with the notion that electrons exist in discrete energy levels which we now give the letter N, so N equals 1 means the first energy level where you find electrons, so it's the energy level closest to the nucleus. However, there are several limitations with his model. Firstly, that he decided that electrons existed in concentric circles around the nucleus. This is something you learnt at GCSE. This isn't actually perfectly accurate and we'll go into why slightly later on in this video. He also only studied one element, hydrogen, so he was very limited with what he could suggest based on just the one electron which surrounds hydrogen. And lastly, he suggested that electrons' positions within their orbit is fixed, and again, we know that that is incorrect. However, he did give us the ideas of electrons existing in discrete energy levels around the nucleus, so for that we need to be really grateful. So now we move on to the updated version of the structure of the atom and we need to look at the quantum mechanics model. So we need to start discussing various words such as orbitals, sublevels, etc. So let's start by looking at the energy levels in further detail and working out how many electrons can go into each energy level. And as I've already told you, n equals 1 means the energy level or shell closest to the nucleus. n equals 2 will be slightly further out, n equals 3 will be further out again. And as I told you in the line emission spectra video, electrons have more energy the further out they go from the nucleus because they require more energy to actually boost them to that higher level of excitation. In order to know how many electrons fit into each energy level, you're going to use the formula 2n squared, where, where n is the energy level in question. So 2n squared, when applied to the first energy level, so n equals 1, substitute that in, so n squared, 1 squared is obviously 1, times it by 2, so there are two electrons which can go into the first energy level. Let's take the second energy level, so n equals 2. 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. So the maximum that can be held in the second energy level is 8 electrons. For the third energy level, we're going to do 3 squared, which is 9, and then times that by 2, so 18 electrons can go into the third energy level. However, it's not as straightforward as that, and I'm sure lots of you have heard of the word sublevels, and that's where I'm going now with this video. When we're talking about sublevels, we must understand the word orbital. Now, an orbital is just a fancy way of describing an area in space where you stand a very high chance or high probability of finding an electron, and there are various different orbitals you need to know about. These are the s orbital, the p orbital, the d orbital, and the f orbital. So starting with the s orbital, the S orbital is spherical shaped, and that means you stand a 99% chance of finding an electron within this sphere shape. The S orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. We're looking at the P orbital now. This is dumbbell shaped, and it exists within three planes, and you've got to try and imagine this like a mathematical graph. So you remember that there's the X axis, the Y axis, and then lastly the Z axis is coming towards you or moving away from you. So it's three planes. And each of those planes can hold a maximum of two electrons. And so because there are three planes, it means that a p orbital can hold a maximum of six electrons. So going back to the s orbital, spherical shape can hold two electrons. p orbital can hold six electrons. The d orbital can hold a maximum of ten electrons. Now we need to go into greater depth because we know we need to start drawing electronic configurations. So we're just going to take a step back and look at n equals one again. So the first energy level. I've told you that that can hold, based on 2n squared, it can hold a maximum of two electrons. I told you that an s orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, which is why the first energy level only has the s sublevel. It's the only thing it can contain, which is why when you start filling it up, you start saying 1s2, because it's the first energy level, so 1. It contains an s sublevel, hence the s, and it contains two electrons, hence the two. So 1s2, and that will actually correspond to the element helium. Now we're going to look at the second energy level, so n equals 2. Based on 2n squared, we know that it can hold a maximum of 8 electrons. How does that work in terms of sublevels? Well, the first sublevel, so the s sublevel, will take two of those electrons out of the equation. 
meaning there are six left. That's why we turn to the p orbital. I've already told you that the p orbital can hold a maximum of six electrons, which makes sense. Six plus two is eight. So in the second energy level, you're reaching the S sublevel and the P sublevel. So energy level three contains a maximum of 18 electrons according to 2n squared, and we know this is divided up as an S orbital, which takes away two of those electrons, a P orbital that takes away six of them, and then the D orbital that contains a maximum of 10 electrons. So now I've given you the overview, we're now going to switch to the iPad so you can look how we're going to draw the orbital diagrams electronic configurations and then the condensed version involving noble gases. Right, I'm going to show you a foolproof way of working out how you write out electronic configurations and this way always works and stops you having to learn endless lists of elements. So just start by listing the various energy levels. So n equals 1, obviously that's the energy level or shell closest to the nucleus. n equals 2, n equals 3 n equals 4 and n equals 5 and then I'm going to show you how to draw the diagram that will help you work out your configurations. So just start by writing 1s because remember the first energy level only has an s sub level which is why we're putting the s and it's an energy level 1 which is why it's 1s and then just copy that down making sure you use the appropriate number for the energy level in question. Looking at energy level 2, we now reach the P sublevel. So I'm going to write P is in energy level 2, which is why it's 2P. I can copy that down again. We're reaching energy level 3 now. That moves into the D sublevel, which is why we're writing 3D. And then in energy level 4, we reach the F sublevel. So 4F fiber. Now I'm changing colour and I'm going to just show you what you need to do now. So you need to write arrows onto this. Be very specific how you draw these arrows. They need to be diagonal going from right to left. And this is why it's essential that you've lined up everything perfectly. And this will show you the order that you fill. So I'll give you an example now and we're going to use the element fluorine. Looking at fluorine now, so using the periodic table I see that fluorine has an atomic number of 9, which means it contains 9 electrons. Have a look over here on the right hand side, I know that the S sublevel can contain a maximum of 2 electrons, P contains a maximum of 6, D contains a maximum of 10, and F is 14. So using my diagram now, I can see based on the arrows that the first thing I need to write is 1S2 because the S sublevel contains a maximum of two electrons. Following the arrows, we see the next arrow points at 2S, so 2S2. Add those twos together, that's four. Take them away from the nine electrons, meaning that there are five electrons that still need to be placed, and I can see according to my diagram, that needs to go into the 2P sublevel, and it's going to be a five. I just want to show you how this can be drawn as an orbital diagram. So I've literally just used boxes to represent each orbital. So we've got 1s, 2s and 2p. I'm now going to show you how to draw various orbital diagrams. So do bear in mind, especially if you're studying IB, you need to be aware of certain principles. And this will be applicable with A-level. You, you're probably just not aware that they've got special names. So first of all, the alpha-bow principle states that electrons fill the lowest energy orbital that is available first. We've actually already followed that principle by writing it out as 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. We know that it occupies the s orbital first of all, the s sublevel first of all. Then we need to follow a second principle, which is the Pauli exclusion principle that states that any orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Yeah, that makes sense because look, there's the first electron, there's the second electron, so there's 1s2 complete. And look, it's that box, that orbital is holding a maximum of two electrons. And so I'll just keep filling. So we know that the 2s sublevel is full. Then we know that Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, <laughs> this just states that electrons fill all the orbitals singly before occupying them in pairs. So I'll show you what that means. We know from my electronic configuration that 2p has to have has to have five electrons in it. So according to Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity, they occupy singly first. So there's the first three electrons in. Then we go to occupy them in pairs. So there's the fourth electron and there's the fifth electron. And so by writing it out in this way, 
I know that I've obeyed Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity. If this is sounding confusing, don't worry, I'm going to show you so many examples, you're going to be sick to death of it. You might want to know why I've drawn my electrons like this, kind of up and down arrows. That's just because the electrons have an opposite spin, and that's actually part of the Pauli exclusion principle. We're now going to use the example of potassium to carry on practicing. So using the periodic table, potassium has an atomic number of 19. This means its electronic number, electron number is 19. So using the diagram above, we can see we start with 1s2. Let's follow the arrows, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And let's just count how many electrons we have. 4, 10, 18. So we just need one more. And we see that the arrow points from 3p to 4s, which is why it's 4s1. Now we're going to practice the orbital diagrams. So there's the 1s. Here's 2s. This will be the 2p. Remember, it has three orbitals. This will be 3s. This will be 3p. And lastly, 4s. So let's, according to all those ridiculous principal names, work out how we're going to fill this. So we know that the 1s sublevel is full. So there's the first electron, there's the second electron. Same with 2s, there it goes. And then according to Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity, we have to occupy them singly, first of all. And then we go and occupy them in pairs. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, it's full, but it's good to get used to how you're actually filling them. Moving into the 3s sublevel. 3p sublevel. And lastly, 4s. It's just a single electron. And I might label them because that would make sense. We do need to know some exceptions to this rule. And actually, there's only two you need to know about, chromium and copper. Let's look at chromium, first of all. So using the periodic table, we see it has an atomic number of 24, which means its electron number is also 24. According to this diagram, we would therefore write the electronic configuration like this. And it's nice and quick using this um, approach. Right, let's see where we've got up to. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. Okay, so we're trying to reach 24, which, was, which is why we would imagine it would be 3d4. However, I'm now going to write out what it actually is. Let's look closely at why this occurs, and it's actually helpful to look at the orbital diagram for D. So remember that can contain a maximum of 10 electrons. So we would see that as five boxes. Now if we start filling it, according to Hun's rule, the electrons fill singularly. And if you have a look at this, according to the way we would imagine you would fill, which is 3D4, that's where it would stop. But for some reason, relating to energy, which I'm not going to go into here, the D sublevel would much prefer to have electrons in every single orbital as opposed to leaving that final orbital blank, which is why we then put a fifth electron here at the detriment of 4s containing a full number of electrons. Let's now look at copper. So copper's atomic number is 29, so it has 29 electrons. So we're going to do exactly the same and work out what we would imagine the electronic configuration to be and then look at what it actually is. Let's see where we're up to. So 10, so we're up to 20. So we've reached 4s, so I'm following the next arrow. So it goes 3d and that will be nine. So I've drawn out the actual electronic configuration and we can see again, we've got this time that the 4s sublevel isn't complete. It only has one electron in it and the 3d has gained an extra electron to make it 3d10. The reason being is because the 3d has less energy than 4s when it's completely filled. Now we need to look at how we draw electronic configurations but do condensed ones involving noble gases. So let's take potassium for example. So we can see that potassium is in group 1 and if you look at the noble gas that occurs before potassium, so look up a period, you can see that that would be argon, which is why argon forms the core. Now potassium has an atomic number of 19, 
whereas argon has an atomic number of 18. The quickest way of working out how you complete this electronic configuration is by seeing that potassium is in the S block, it's in the fourth period. If you look at the difference in electrons from potassium and to argon, you see there's one electron difference, which is why it's 4S1. Right, let's have a look at drawing the condensed electronic configuration for nickel. Nickel has an atomic number of 28, so have a look in the periodic table and see which element, which noble gas occurs before nickel, and we see it is argon. Argon has an atomic number of 18, and so here's the noble gas core, argon. So we have 10 electrons left over. Because argon is in period 3, it just tells you that everything is full up until then, so just make sure you start at the next sublevel, so that will be 4, so it's 4s, 2, looking at the diagram we now enter the 3d sublevel, and we have 8 electrons left over, so it's 3d8. Now let's have a go looking at sulphur, so sulphur has an atomic number of 16, look in the periodic table and see which noble gas occurs before that, it is neon. And neon, this periodic table is annoyingly wrong, has 10 electrons altogether, has an atomic number of 10. So let's work out how we're going to do this. We have our noble gas core, which is neon. It is in period 2, and therefore we need to start with the 3s as being the next sublevel that we fill. It's going to be 3s2, then using our diagram we see it turns to 3p. And we've only got 4 electrons left to deal with, so that's why it's 3p4. One more time, let's have a go this time with chlorine. So chlorine has 17 electrons, an atomic number of 17. Looking at the periodic table, we see that it is neon again. So that's our core. Neon has 10 electrons. So the difference here is 7. So because neon was in the second period, we are moving into the 3s sublevel. And we only have five electrons to find room for. So according to the diagram, the next sublevel that will be filled will be 3p. And it's just 3p5.